My name is Lewis. I'm 16 years old. I go to Dobson High School in Phoenix, Arizona, and I am a biohacker. Every year, the world's most extreme body hackers gather at a home in the mountains beside the Mojave Desert for Grind Fest, a weekend devoted to the merging of body modification and technology. This year culminated with an electrified knife fight, but the main draw was the implantation of anything from magnets to microchips. You know, I mean, people have been doing piercings for so long that it's kind of, oh, they're piercing artists are doing this and that's okay. The fact that we're using technology when we're doing this, people think of it as something different and it seems like, oh, this is probably some dangerous thing and like, you know, these schmoes in a garage are like cutting themselves or whatever. And it's like, you no, know, we actually do a, a lot of research. We put a lot more effort into it than, you know, for example, a new implant for the body modification community okay. would. Biohacking and grinding appealed to me because I was just looking for the next step, you know? We're always chasing after what's going to be the next big thing. And to me, grinding and biohacking encapsulates almost all of the next big things. Rather than having this kind of, you know, let's talk about the philosophical ramifications and the ethics of something. Instead, it's like, no, let's go in and let's do some soldering and, and throw some of this crap together and see what we can get done. Grindfest is a combination of a family reunion and a mad scientist convention. The people who are here have wonderful ideas, great skill sets. They are both a family and a community, and they're trying to help each other do more and be more, and that draws you in. What do I think about Grindfest? We get at LAX, we get a ride that he's arranged, and the first person I meet is somebody of Caucasian descent with two horns on their head. We're very open, but that was the first impression I got, and I had to make sure I changed my thought process and see everybody's hearts and be aware of it. So I like the hearts of people here. I really do. A lot of biohackers for the past few years have been experimenting with things like magnet implants and RFIDs or NFC chips that can confirm your identity or work as contactless payment for credit card purchases. I think a lot of that is getting to be in the mainstream. And you see this now. You see companies chipping their employees so they can access their buildings. It actually falls under body modification. Um, I can't do anything that's truly medical. You know, I can't do anything that's going to be really invasive and could be construed as being some kind of, you know, surgery. Can you do incisions and surgery on yourself? I think you should be able to. But then you cross that line of, would it be safer to have a trained person do that on you? I think it would but perhaps that's illegal in some cases. I ended up with an eye injury and kind of was joking about, do we have the Terminator eye ready yet? Because if so, let's take my eye out and we'll put that in. The doctor basically said, yeah, no, we don't have that, walked away, but that led me to question, what do we have? So that got me into implanting the injectable RFIDs, NFCs into my hand, just to see what I could do with them. I can feel electromagnetic fields. I have technically six senses now. That's kind of cool, right? It's just a simple little thing you can do, but it changes the way you view the world. Tomorrow, the FDA could say, everything that's happening here is illegal. What I think we need proactively, and we're trying to build this from within and self-police, is common sense regulation so that people can say there's already a standard of practices, we know what the rules are, we can play in this space. Most of the technologies implanted are still in their infancy, but the future of body hacking could have major impacts on society. Imagine falling asleep and your house knows this because your temperature dropped and your heart rate dropped, so your lights turn off and your doors lock and your house goes into sleep mode. And then as soon as you wake up, you don't have to do anything. Your coffee maker starts brewing your coffee and your lights turn on and the shower starts running. And this can all happen by sharing information from your body with your technology and having it interact with you. And that's really what I'm looking forward to is outsourcing these decisions to my environment so that I can focus on more important things. People like their Fitbits. And if you can show them a tiny little implant that acts like a Fitbit but lasts for two years and they never have to worry about it, think about it, recharge it, it just shows up on their phone with their data. There's going to be a point when people are like, yeah, do that. That's awesome.